So sometimes you'll find that there's no existing image for the software that you want to use, or maybe there's an existing image, but it lacks something. Maybe it needs to be updated to a newer version of the software, or maybe a newer version of that software has caused something to change, so it no longer works. So that's where Docker files come in. So Docker files are used to create our own custom images. So all the Docker images are based on Docker files. Um, and these all start from a base image. And then it contains a series of steps. And these steps are what set up the environments. And we will, or I will go into this a bit more detail soon. Um, and one cool thing is we can then share these custom images via an image registry so that other people can use them and contribute to them. Um, okay, so before we talk more about Docker files, I thought it'd be good to think conceptually how we usually install software and how it's usually used, um, just because it's important for when we're working with Docker files. So there's a few ways where there's a few ways that we can actually install software and use it. One is package managers, and these manages the collection of software, and they have things like automated install. They have upgrades, and they can remove uh, software very easily. Uh, then there's the executable files and binaries, and these are software that's already been built or compiled into executable files. So these probably look familiar, like a .jar file or a .c file. There's also like the built-in uh, commands such as grep or tar or diff, md5 sum. These are all executable files or binaries. And then finally, there's building or running source files. So this is more labor intensive, but you might have to actually compile from a source build yourself and then build it into an executable or something along those lines. So you as a Docker, as a Docker file author, you'll outline these steps once and then your downstream users will never have to worry about that again. So they'll never have to worry about using these package managers, using these executable files or like building stuff from source files and going through complex markdown files they just run a Docker file and it's easy for them. So it's off the shelf. So I'm gonna look at now the uh, kind of general overview of what a Docker file looks like. Um, it's really just a simple text file with instructions to build an image. It is YAML syntax. So if you look at the top, it starts from a base image and you'll always see that. There's metadata. That's another core component. So in this case, we have maintainer, such as like the authorship information, which is pretty important. Um, then there's sections for installing the software and any dependencies required, and that's the run section. And this can also be set, calling setup scripts as well. Um, you can do other environmental prep. So you can use this like env command to set environment variables. And then finally, you can define, this is optional, but you can define the commands that are run when the container starts. So how does the Docker file fit in to the whole ecosystem of Docker? Or Docker? Um, well, the Docker file comes before the, the image and it must be built in order to create a Docker image that can be, then be shared and used by everyone. So in this case, instead of um, pulling something from a Docker registry, you'd be building it locally from a Docker file, and that would create the image. Um, you can then, now that you've created this image based on a Docker file, you can now run it the exact same way you did before and create a container. So this is a simple example that we're going to look at. It's BWA. It's an alignment uh, algorithm. And this is installed via package manager, which is one of the examples of how uh, you may be installing your software currently. Um, it's installed with APT. Uh, now, this has the same components that I mentioned in the previous slide. Um, you'll notice if you think of it in terms of components, no matter how big these get, um, as long as you think about them in terms of components, they get easy to follow. Um, so you start with a base image, um, and that's true for all Docker files, and you can add metadata. So in this case, you're adding some uh, authorship. This is optional, but highly recommended. Um, then you can do things like 
install any dependencies that you need or change the user, which we won't go into here. And then you can install the actual analysis software that you want to use. And in this case, we're just installing PWA with APT. So earlier I mentioned that we need to build Docker files uh, to create the Docker images. And that's what this Docker build command. Uh, you can see at the top, the general structure. Um, it also has the flag options, but it has something called the build context, which can be a bit confusing. Um, think of it like it's a directory containing a set of files the build process can refer to during the build. Uh, so this includes like the Docker file. Um, and by default, the docstore CLI will look for a Docker file in the root of the build context. Um, so like you give a path and then it looks for it's that path slash Docker file. Uh, typically, people use the current directory as a build context, which is why you'll see this period uh, for most Docker builds here and probably elsewhere. And that just sets the current directory to be the build context. And then typically your Docker file would be in that same directory. Um, there are two important flags that we're going to look at. There's this dash T flag and this dash F flag. So the dash T flag is used to name images and to create tags. So in this first example here, you can see we're building uh, Docker image in the current, with the build context that is current directory. So we're just implicitly using the Docker file in the current directory. We're going to name that contain, or we're going to name that image BWA, and the version or the tag is going to be v1.0. And then there's another uh, useful flag, and this is to override the default path of the Docker file, which again, I said before. It looks just relative to the build context and build and path that you give slash Docker file. Um, in this case, we're overriding that. And we're saying it's in this folder Docker file slash BWA slash Docker file. Um, but you'll end up with the exact same image, assuming that the Docker files, the references are the same file. And then you can also um, view the Docker images that you've built using this Docker image ls command. Um, and that, that's useful for seeing what you've built and what versions of different uh, of different images you have. 